This is not some clickbait video where I'm gonna show you a bunch of unusual techniques that nobody uses. And look, I'm not taking shots at anybody, but I wanna know who's gonna melt a Toblerone bar and then smear it on a plate to look fancy. I wanna know. I wanna know who that person is. This is also not a plating guide. These are simple but effective ways to make your food look instantly better regardless of skill level. Yeah, that's about it. Of different things and to be honest with you there's not really a lot to debrief you on here you know I, I usually put my thank yous at the end of the video so in case anyone has missed it I just want to say huge thank you to everybody that means you that supports my channel and watches my videos it blows me away uh, I do work extremely extremely hard on all this stuff if you haven't noticed you know we hit 200,000 subscribers less than a week ago and I think we're already at 220 something thousand right now just thank you okay now anyway let's do this shall we now we're gonna break this into a couple different parts. So the first thing, if your food's getting cooked, cook your food properly. This is number one. I started with this one because yes, it's totally obvious, yet honestly frequently overlooked how much of a difference properly cooked food makes in the final product of what you're making. It's your first moment of opportunity here, you know? If you're searing meat or vegetables, make sure that you have that perfect, beautiful browning. That alone on a plate is going to look fantastic. The way I see it is nothing is gonna save you if you're already starting off on the wrong foot. So good color, good browning, nice medium rare, whatever it needs to be, make sure that it is the best that you can do. Number two, use negative space to your advantage. Now, I, th this isn't required, but I personally like to do it. There's nothing wrong with having a little bit of space on your plate. You don't need to completely overload your plate to the point where it's filled all the way to the rim. You can either use larger plates or just plate things with a little less crowding and a little more intentionally. You know, don't overcrowd your pan, don't overcrowd your plate, you know? But with that said, there are some things that do look good with lots of stuff on a single plate, like a charcuterie board. Now that brings me to number three, which is highlight individual components. Now what I mean by that, in a lot of cases, the stuff that you're making food-wise looks better when you layer the components rather than just mixing it all together and throwing it on the plate. If you layer it one layer at a time, it just tends to make things look so much nicer. You know, once you mix everything in a bowl or something, you're letting all the juices and colors kind of get blended together and it loses its muster. But when you layer it, you, not only can you see every component, but it just it's just so much more visually pleasing. And plus, you know, it makes you feel a little chefy. You wanna pull your you wanna pull your chef tweezers out? Do it. If you are a chef or a cook and you're watching this, everybody knows that the more tweezers you have, the more of a chef you are. That's a joke, by the way, that, that was a joke. Now, number four, garnish, garnish, garnish. Now, this is the number one restaurant crutch in the world. There are so many plate ups at restaurants that I've worked at that look like total garbage without their garnish. But let me just rephrase this really quick. Do I think garnish is oftentimes used as a crutch? Well, obviously, yes. Do I think people should use that to their advantage and make something look nice almost instantly? Why not? I do it. You know, we don't really do it the old school way. It's You don't have to chiffon on herbs and sprinkle them on top. You can go out to the farmer's market and buy some really nice microgreens and some nasturtium or, or whatever you can get at the store. There's lots of greens that you can use. Now that brings me to number five, which is add color and texture. Now this is somewhat related to both garnishing and highlighting components, blah, 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 whatever, you get the point. But you know, like for example, a plate of dumplings is, is nice and all, but, but it kind of looks a little depressing just with nothing on it let's be honest okay but simply by adding a little bit of chili oil now you have something that looks not just more appealing but but honestly quite beautiful because it's both a texture and a color thing you've got that vibrant red and then like the crunchy little chili flakes in there by the way chili oil recipe in the links in my description you know don't feel bad about that plug or like these plain seared pork chops are nice and all but they can look much better by adding some fresh radish, some chimichurri, some pickled onions, green garnish. You've got all these different colors going on, but they all sort of coincide with each other. It's not just one color. Think of it like an artist or don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be that serious. Just, you know, throw something in that has some color. And now for number six. Now, this is something that I learned working in fine dining restaurants, which is 
Everything looks good some way. Don't look at food or ingredients as inherently ugly or boring in their natural state. There is a way to make almost all things look beautiful, whether it's the shape you, you cut it or it's the way that you cook it. You gotta go into this with a very positive and optimistic outlook. This stuff is about having fun and making something you like. Who gives a shit when anyone thinks? And if somebody doesn't like it, well then you just pull out your chef tweezers and you, you tweeze them where it hurts, you know? Right where it hurts. Oh, that's my timer. Okay, so a little bit different of an outro this time. If you made it this far, please don't skip this part. Just give me a second to say something really quick. Cooking is something that is innately in all of us. Generally speaking, we're the only animals on the planet that cooks our food. So whether you think you can cook or not, it's there. And you know what, forget everything that I even said in this video because plenty of the time and sometimes and most of the time it's not just about making a pretty plate of food. Sometimes you cook just because it's delicious or nostalgic and the appearance is utterly unimportant. And it goes way deeper than just the food we eat. It's rooted deeply in every culture around the world. It's the people that we eat with, it's the memories that we hold within it. And I personally believe that now is the most exciting time to be cooking than ever before in history, period. So if you're thinking about it, and it being cooking, do it. Yeah, that felt good to say. And if you watch this part, I appreciate you. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Oh, real quick, just thank you to Butter Splatter for this outro idea of closing the door. It's a, so obvious. Didn't think about doing that, but uh, thank you. <laughs>